Hey guys, are you here? And today I want to show you guys a win, a loss, and then another win against the same team. Today I'm going to be playing with Jamili, and I kind of want to uncover a little bit why we're winning and why we're losing and the differences between these games. So as we jump into it, I'm playing Holy Paladin, Frost Mage, Boomkin, which is just something that I personally like to play. I wouldn't say it's, uh, you know, one of the strongest comps right now. I would probably say instead, <laughs> I bring up my song here, it's a little bit too loud. I'd probably say instead of the Holy Paladin, I would go with the Resto Shaman in most circumstances. Once again, I play with Holy Paladin because Versace X is my friend. And the comp isn't terrible, but, you know, it's probably better with the Resto Shaman. We're fighting a Fire Mage, an Arms Warrior, and a Holy Paladin. This is the first game we fight them of three games that we fight them in total. And we're going to go over all three games today. Uh, my Paladin bobs me up so I can get the re uh, CC there. And just because it's good defensively as well. So it's like a multi-purpose bob. I get the full sheep into the half sheep onto the Paladin. Don't have a kick available for this mage casting the polymorph, so my paladin gets full sheeped. One of the main things that you want to keep in note here, guys, is that most of your counter spells should be going into the mage's polymorph. It's good for two reasons. One, it keeps your paladin out of CC, and then two, it makes it so the mage can't blink, so, you know, he can't get prismatic cloak, so he takes more damage. If the mage can't blink and he can't sheep, he can't peel, so it leaves him useless defensively and it leaves him useless offensively because he can't get the CC onto your healer. I counterspell the sheep right there and then I land the sheep on the pally. Another good thing about counterspelling sheep, counterspelling sheep is just amazing guys. So if you learn anything from this video and you just turn it off right now, remember to counterspell sheep. It's just good. But another thing about counterspelling sheep is that he can't counterspell you. So if you counterspell the mage and his sheep, you kind of wait for them to go, sit back, wait, 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 counterspell the mage in his sheep um, he's locked in Arcane, which means he can't counterspell you, and then you can land a full sheep on his healer without the risk of getting counterspelled. Once again, counterspell that mage and his sheep attempt on my paladin. I think he Dragon's Breath tried to go for a sheep, locked him out. My paladin is still not getting CC'd, and this is just very, very good. The mage eventually does get that sheep, but I get a full sheep on, uh, onto his paladin. A little bit of overlap there with the root beam, which is not super good. War banner goes down. We kill the war banner pretty promptly right there. Uh, Paladin gets out of the CC chain. No more sheep. Uh, that overlap hurt us a little bit. And, you know, doesn't look like we have any clones. I sheep the warrior. He gets dispelled. Paladin gets cloned. Couldn't get the resheep because of that spell reflection. Still doing decent pressure onto the mage. Hodge following the CC chain onto the Pally. Gonna see if I can follow that up with the sheep, which I do. Casting a blizzard ditch just to try to get a slow on the mage there. Paladin... Uh, bubbles, and you want to keep that in mind for later, because if the pally has no bubble, pally has no trinket, it's definitely an open kill target later on in this game. So we're kind of keeping all of our options open, guys. You want you want to keep an eye on all of these DRs. We're you know keeping sheep DR and clone DR up for the most part. My boomy is doing a good job with that. I sheep the warrior to kind of just alleviate some pressure. We don't have to do. Like, in, in the way we're playing this matchup is more just going mage, ceasing pally, and besides that, making big swaps. We're not doing too much rot pressure here. However, I am playing Glacial Spike. Um, so that's good for single target, and I'm playing Splitting Ice as well. So Splitting Ice might be a little questionable of a of a play there. Anyway, we get a big go onto the pally with the Hodge and the BMD dice. I'm going to actually rewind that um, so we can kind of see how that... Nope, not fast forward. Rewind to, to see how that kill kind of comes about. Uh, mage gets into the ice block and instead of just saying okay we got ice block let's hang out what i decide to do is cast an ebon bolt and we hodge out of that root beam so the root beam is used for cc but in addition to cc we made another swap out of it with the pally with no trigger and no bubble so here it is i'm casting ebon bolt let's go through everything um i'm casting ebon bolt and i'm close to the warrior. Let's see if i can get a pause i'm close to the warrior warrior has kick available what i'm going to do with this ebon bolt is blink away from the warrior so i cannot get kicked or stopped from this warrior so the blink is very important or else the warrior just kicks my ebon bolt and then the pally doesn't die cast the ebon bolt blink away warrior can't kick me ebon bolt goes off flurry goes off ice lance goes off blizzard goes off and with all that damage out of the hodge the pally does go down so pretty cool game there um kind of showed you how that got set up pally and the it from 10 more seconds and if we didn't kill the pally there hopefully we got more defensive so that the mage would go down a little bit later after that and the, the mage the enemy name uh enemy mage is named jamili tko that's not jamili i'm playing with jamili the enemy mage i think is bert maybe and he's playing fire so you know fun matchup there so we fought these guys a second game on the grand and uh, this game didn't go as well, and I kind of want to figure out for myself and for you guys on why this game didn't go as well. I, I remember playing this game last night, and I'm like, what the heck? You know, why didn't we do very well in this game? Um, right off the bat, using the root beam onto the pally might have been a mistake here because the mage is still an invis. So unless we wanted to do a big 
pally opener out of that, just like we ended the game last time, it's kind of just a waste of that root beam. What I would have liked to see is the mage come out and then root beam the pally into, you know, a hodge on the mage into a triple sheet pally into clone, something like that. But instead, you know, we just don't get that good of an opener. Once again, counterspell that mage right out of stealth. I use counterspell one, two, three binds for that. So I can, you know, counterspell him very, very quickly. War banner comes out. We get a lot of pressure onto the pally and we really only force rally and cry and, you know, wings and he tops himself off. So this is just bad once again. We're, we're committing too much to Paladin, whereas last game we went onto the mage and then when we went pally, we only went pally when it favored us. And this game, um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to force Pally a little bit too much. We used all of our cooldowns, Icy Veins, Orb, and we didn't even get Bubble or Trinket. It's just not going too well. Um, we've already used a Bop, a Sack. Um, like I said, we already used the Icy Veins. Also, my Pally's gotten sheeped once, and I think I might have had a Counterspell for it. So that's my bad. I probably should have Counterspelled the Polymorph, or at least set myself up in a situation where I could Counterspell that Polymorph without my Pally going into CC and having to eat that CC. I do get a full sheep onto the Pally, trying to see if I can lock this... Oh, I don't have a lockout actually for that polymorph. I have a lockout in five more seconds here. So my pally's gonna eat some more counter CC. Guys, another problem. My pally's eating a lot more CC. Um, and yeah, that's, you know, if my pally's eating more CC and we're not getting their offensive cooldowns or defensive cooldowns, it's just bad. This game just isn't going as well. Um, sacrifice is up and the block is up. So another mistake here where we've overlapped two of our larger defensive cooldowns, sack and block. Once again, not the smoothest game. And, you know, these things happen. I... On the channel, I know I know I post a lot of wins in general. That's because they're educational. But I also want to start posting more losses as well to kind of you know I lose too. I, I lose I lose a ton. If you guys didn't know, uh, you probably did. But you know I want to post more losses as well because you know you can learn a lot from losses and kind of understanding what went wrong in this game. What could we have done different? Sacrifice comes out on the mage. We do cyclone it. Very you know good overall. Once again, you know, bl orbs down, blizzards down, and we're kind of hitting the- it, it just seems like in this game we're hitting the pally too much. We're almost forcing the pally too much, and going pally is good, but like I said, when it's favorable for us. Because look at this pally, still is trinket and he still is bubble, and we've committed this entire game pretty much to going pally, whereas last game, we were committing most of the game going mage. Um, we use a beam there on the mage to, to stop the CC instead of using the root beam on the pally to extend a CC chain. Once again, maybe not the best use of beam, but it, you know, it's hard to tell because it just kind of depends on the strategy. If we want to you know, just play very defensive and win in the dampening, using a beam like that is completely fine. If we want to go pally, using a beam to set up is completely fine. But you know, if we want to just do setups on mage, it's not that fine. Once again, we hodge the pally and we're going pally. But look at this. In our paladin go, my paladin's sheeped. I'm 10% live. I'm forced into my ice block. And my druid is uh, you know, in the dragon's breath. So there's just no reason here that we should be going pally. We should be going for CC on the pally. We're not CCing the warrior nearly as much. Um, and we're just not focusing on the mage. So last game, we were cross CCing the pally and the warrior beautifully while targeting the mage and then taking opportunities when they came to us to actually swap onto the pally out of our CC chains once we already got mage defensive cooldowns. But in this game, we're just forcing the pally in swaps because, I don't know, subconsciously we, we you know, killed the paladin last game. We're like, okay, let's just lull, we're fine. Let's just kill the pally. But it you know, doesn't look like this game's going too well for us at all. Get a full sheep on the paladin. Finally getting some type of pressure, but he just trinket sacks because, you know, this far into the game, he still has a cooldown like that. He just goes, you know, trinket sack, keep them offensive. And now, you know, with them being offensive, my paladin gets full CC'd. Um, you know, I'm going down. We do get a lot of pressure off on the pally and he does uh, you know, have to bubble. So now Pally has no bubble, no trinket. And out of all of these attempts, the way we got the, the most cool ones was CCing the Pally going mage and then going Pally, just like we did last game. So that's really what we should have been doing from the start. But at this point, it might be too late because my Pally has no trinket, no bubble, no sack. Um, I have no ice blocks. I'm trying to do my best to run away, kite, and survive. But the Pally and the Warrior are eventually going to catch up to me, and I do go down. So, yeah, in this game, guys, we just didn't really stick to our strategy. We didn't have enough cross CC. We should have been focused more on killing the Mage and less unfocused on killing the Warrior um, or the Paladin. Okay, guys, so this is the last game that we fought them yesterday, and this is from in Tiger's Peak Arena, three different arenas um, against the same exact team. I think maybe three times in a row. This might have been, yeah, I think this is back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Um, and in this game, 
we try to play a little bit better. Uh, I think we can still go Pally if things are set up more. I think we really want to focus more on our CC on the Warrior, more on our CC on the Pally, hit Mage, and then go Pally when it's convenient for us. Um, they decide to open up onto my Druid there. I try to peel a Mage of the Polymorph, but I do get Counterspelled, which is not super good. Not the best opener here at all. My Pally's got CC'd. I Temp Shield. They stole the Temp Shield, trying to get some type of CC out so I don't have to block. My Pally uses Trinket and Sacrifice, so I'm going to be okay, but... You know, we opened up a Trinket and Sack, not the greatest. Once again, we open up onto the Pally, not the greatest opener, but if we do get Bubble or Trinket, it could be worth it, and we don't get it. So once again, we're not, not really learning from our mistakes. We should have just, you know, CC'd Pally, went Mage, and then went Pally off of the CC. Probably would have been a much better option. Um, once again, my Pally gets, uh, you know, landed in that Sheep when I have Counterspell up because I was locked in Arcane. So, so far, this game was going terribly, not really, you know, learning much from last game. Should have been focused on stopping those, you know, sheeps. Should have been focusing more on mage. Should have not opened pally. And yeah, just, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, repeat mistakes here. And I think at the end of last game, I, since I didn't sit down and analyze it, I really didn't know why we lost. So last game, as I was watching it with you guys, that's kind of the first time I really saw why we lost. So in this game, you know, watching your replays is, you know, just very good um, learning tactic. I always talk about that in, when I do coaching sessions and stuff, is just record your gameplay and watch it back because all the mistakes become so obvious. Sheep myself here so I get top back off. Warrior's freedom, I do spell steal that. We're going mage a lot more in this game. Lock out the Paladin, which is a pretty offensive play here. Now I'm not going to have Counterspell for the Mage. I did that because the Mage got very low. We got a Cyclone off of the Lockout into a full Sheep. Not the worst CC chain here. Lockout into Cyclone in the Sheep. Trying to do my best to kill the War Banner, but since I'm splitting Ice, it actually breaks the Pally out of CC. I belt the Pally into a half Cyclone. Mage gets sacrificed up. My Pally gets full Sheeped. Don't have a Counterspell available for another second. I can Counterspell this next uh, Mage cast if I want to. Um, Paladin's dipping pretty low, and we're swapping onto him because of that sacrifice um, that he has out. Back onto the Mage, since Mage is still about you know, 40-50%. As I say that, he gets topped off. Um, trying to play a little bit more defensive here because my Pally's in the Sheep in the middle of the map. You can see him in that little um, you know, mark through the pillar there. Hitting the mage with some counter pressure, trying to spell steal his cauterize or his temp shield, but I couldn't really get it. Beautiful clone by my druid, so the temp shield doesn't heal, and I am forced into my second ice block into this game, and uh, you know come out pretty early because my paladin's doing a decent job of topping me back off. Very scared, juke the kick there. Um, counter spell doesn't go onto me, I don't think. Get dragon's breath up, trying to get any CC I can onto the pally. Full sheep onto the pally, see if we can get anything uh, onto the mage now. I get sheeped. See if there's any follow CC onto the pally. We get the Hodge onto the pally, hitting the pally. And I think that's okay. If we CC the pally, then go off of the CC, that's fine. Problem is, if we just try to force the pally without getting CC first and going mage, then it's bad. Look at this. We get bubble from going onto the pally right here because we CC'd him first, made the mage scared, made the mage run, and then turned onto the pally. It's completely different than just running into the pally. Once again, sheep the warrior, frosting over the dispel, trying to kite this warrior as best as I can with cross CC. Another clone onto the warrior. We're doing much better at controlling the warrior this game, and our strategy of CCing the pally, hitting mage, and then swapping the pally is really paying off. Uh, fast forwarding through this game a little bit, as uh, you know, they're doing their go. Um, I full sheep the paladin. Unfortunately, the mage is cloned during that full sheep, trying to get the resheep. Couldn't really get it. We get the reclone instead. I have icy veins and orb available. Use my icy veins. Use the ebon bolt. He gets very low cauterized procs. They use sag and block. So they were actually doing pretty well in this game, but they used every defensive cooldown they had in one go. That was cauterize block and sack if mage would have just blocked that full hp during that go they would have still had so many defensives left available for later in this match but you know they kind of just overlapped which does happen it happened to us last game it can happen to anyone really with just a little bit of miscommunication um i get resacked up here um, I sheep, i'm sheeping the warrior we have better control you know game keeps going on i'll keep fast forwarding a little bit though we get our full root beam onto the pally the paladin uses trinket sack to you know keep his mage alive beautiful cyclone onto the mage low um so we can't get healed during that sacrifice immunity my paladin gets full sheep i think i was storm bolted so i couldn't counterspell that but i can counterspell this resheep here um fireballs going off getting pretty low hp that temp shield does uh you know pay off a little bit war banner is down doing my best to kite killing the war banner kill the war banner trying to sheep the warrior do get kicked conical the warrior to keep him nice and slow and 
getting damage off onto the mage. I have counter spell available if the mage wants to, you know, try to sheep or anything like that. He has Tem Shield up, not wanting to do too much pressure into that. Warrior gets out of my sheep, trying to get some more CC on the warrior, trying to get some more CC on the pally. One more chain should end this game. Um, fast forwarding through it a little bit. Uh, we get a hodge, we get a cyclone onto the warrior, a hodge onto the mage, and um, a cyclone onto the pally now. So we have so much CC going out. This mage is so close to dead. Evan Bull goes off and he does go down. So, guys, what I want you to take from this game is just really what it takes to win a game and just the slightest little mistakes like going on the wrong target at the wrong time can make you lose a game even if you just won and in this game what we should have just been doing is ceasing uh the paladin more focusing on the mage and then going the pally off of the cc chains instead of just forcing to go onto the pally but um what i want you guys to learn too is that if you record your gameplay stuff like this becomes obvious it becomes so much easier to see when you made a mistake i would definitely um, highly recommend to download OBS or to stream or to upload your games to YouTube, something like that, and to re-watch your gameplay because you can learn so much just from watching yourself play. Um, even myself, I didn't know why we lost that second game when I was actually playing it, right? But since I was, um, you know, watching it back with you guys talking through it, I'm like, that's why we lost. You know, we didn't play very well and these are the mistakes that we made, so it, we don't want to do that again. So much of the learning process comes through um, just re-watching yourself play. Guys, if you like this video, thumbs it up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs it down. Talk to me in the comments below for what you guys want to see next time. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.